Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Career Evangelist Podcast. Today it's another exciting one because we have a guest with us. We have Damon Button. Uh, Damon is an expert when it comes to SEO. So in the current age that we have, right? If you are going to grow your business, your online presence is essential. So if you want to learn how to uh, grow your business, we have an expert with us. Without keeping you guys waiting any further, I'm going to bring in my guest, Damon. Welcome to the show. Hey, I appreciate the opportunity to chat. It's going to be fun. Okay, this is going to be fun. So uh, I just told everyone that uh, you are the CSEO master. So uh, can you just uh, tell us what it means, SEO, what does that word mean? Search engine optimization, right? Uh, to many people out there, they don't know anything about SEO. Why is SEO important? Yeah, so I think it's a good place to start. Like you said, it, it stands for search engine optimization. Uh, now, the goal is to show up higher on search engines for words that you can make money from. And, and what's different about it is you do it without paid ads. And so you do it by increasing the credibility of your website. So why does that matter and how do you monetize this? Well, the higher you show up on search engines, then the more visibility you get. And so when all of us go to Google or whatever your favorite search engine is, and we look for our problem or how to solve our thing, we usually look at the first three or four websites. And so that's where the majority of the views goes. And that's what your goal is, is to increase the credibility of your website. So you show up in those top positions, which gets you more visibility. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, and I know that's something that you are specialized in. But before we go into how you do that. I want to hear your story uh, because I know you've built, you grew your business from a startup to a multi-million dollar company. Uh, yeah. How do you do that? Can you tell us, because I believe you also started with, uh, like everyone else, how, how did mm -hmm. you turn it around and make it a successful business? Yeah, no, you're right. Um, you know, I didn't have any head start or anything and i and i started by myself and for the first year or two it was just myself um i think one important thing to for early entrepreneurs is to give yourself a little bit of flexibility and freedom uh i i i knew that i would probably do something on my own but i didn't know what i mean before i started my agency if you would have told me that i'd be running a marketing company for almost two decades i would have had no idea um and so a lot of that comes from i didn't pressure myself I, I didn't make myself choose a path and instead I explored paths. And the more that you kind of explore and identify what you like and don't like, it's very much like a relationship. So when you you go on different dates and you see the types of relationships that, that you enjoy and appreciate more, it's the same thing with your career. The more you expose yourself to different opportunities, the more you start to identify the things that you appreciate more. And so I slowly just continued down that path of of pursuing what I the little things that I liked and eliminating the, the small things that I didn't like. And eventually it brought me to an opportunity of, of SEO. And um, when I was exposed to SEO, I found it interesting and thought I'd give it a, enough time, right? That's the second thing is, is you got to give something enough time to determine if it's uh, an opportunity that you can run with. And, and so I, I made a conscious decision that I would pursue SEO for a reasonable amount of time and see if I was able to find success with it. And 17 years later, we're still doing SEO. That's awesome. I hear freedom. I heard uh, flexibility and I heard you telling us to give it time uh, because <laughs> I know many people, they kind of want overnight success uh, you yeah. know, today and be successful tomorrow. And the truth is, uh, you, except maybe you place a <laughs> lottery, uh yeah. meaningful accomplishment takes time so thank you very much for clearly highlighting that now what role does seo play in your own uh success well it's um you know there's there's kind of two different ways you can look at seo there's seo can drive leads or it can convert leads or it can do both and so the reason why i give you that example is because 
the way that I do SEO for myself is a little bit different than the way that my company does it for clients. And so for clients, the goal is to position them higher so that they can get the lead and then convert them. But I actually don't do a lot of outbound lead generation through SEO for myself. Instead, I do more reputation management for myself. So um, I do a lot on social media, which drives a lot of visibility. And then what happens after that is then people want to know more about you. So people may be exposed to you through paid ads or podcasts or social media, but then depending on what it is that you offer, they will then go Google you. They want to make sure that if they're considering you, it'd be a good investment. Uh, if you can drive results, if you have a good reputation, if you have good reviews. So I don't optimize for SEO. And there's another reason I don't optimize for SEO is because the majority of people that search the word SEO are other SEO companies looking to see where they show up. And so I'm not going to fight for something where my audience is. And so instead, I fight more for my name. Um, and so when people then go search for me, you see a lot of great results about all the things that I've accomplished. And then that brings a level of confidence and surety to, to your leads. And then it converts them that way. So, um, I do mine a little bit different than we do for our clients. Um, but that kind of is how we approach it. So in your experience, what has been maybe the most challenging, um, aspect of managing maybe your brand or your reputation online? A couple of things come to mind. I mean, the my my online reputation, I did surprisingly little until just a couple of years ago. So out of the 17 years, it's only been the last few years. And I was very comfortable for a long time. And we can kind of blend this answer with talking about giving yourself freedom and time earlier. Um, you know, it probably took about five years before I started to make decent money. And then it took about 10 years before I felt like it was starting to get to uh, a level of accomplishment that, you know, most people aspire to, to pursue. So over that time, I was just focused on what I was doing. I, I never got really distracted by what competitors were doing. I would try to avoid shiny objects. I wouldn't get caught up in industry news. And I would just focus on what I would see would work and, and what I would identify that, that through my experience was, was a good process. Then... Towards the end, in the last couple of years, um, I actually started doing personal branding on accident. And so what happened was uh, I was mostly only on Facebook and I would keep that just for friends and family. And so if a lead messaged me or a client messaged me, I would actually ignore them. And then what happened was uh, I was really good about keeping the content feed positive. And so it wasn't like there was a lot of negative content and that's not why I turned it off. But eventually I realized it was unproductive because I didn't have a focus. I didn't have an intention in why I was using social media. So I turned it off and then I gave, I had my wife log in and she spent a couple of weeks deleting every post I'd ever made, deleting every comment I'd ever made on somebody else's wall, deleted every private message I had, unfriended everybody. So I wiped it out. And then a couple of weeks later, I realized there was one person I needed to get a hold of that I didn't have their email. I didn't have their phone number. And so I had to turn back on Facebook. And, and so I got thinking, if I'm going to turn this back on, I don't want to turn all this back on just to message one person. And so can I have an intention about this? And that's when I decided, decided to start experimenting with personal branding. And so you asked, you know, about how does it work and how long does it take? And in the beginning, I didn't know, I didn't know what I was doing. And so this is important for people to understand because just like you say, you know, I built up a, su a successful business, but I started where everybody else starts. And and same with social media. I have an okay following. I'm not a huge influencer, but I started where everybody else started. And I just started posting. The, the struggle that I had was, do I talk about business when before I didn't? Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to bore my friends and family. Or do I talk about my friends and family while trying to grow business, but then I'm going to bore a business audience? And so do I talk about one? Do I talk about both? And I finally decided that I don't, I don't care. I'm just going to talk about both because I enjoy both those things. So it took about three months before I felt comfortable posting because some things I'd feel like they were too businessy or they were too personal and I'd delete. And then about six months, I, I started getting consistent leads. And then by the time it was nine months, I realized I had a decent amount of business. And so I, I totaled it up. And in the first nine months, it had added approximately $150,000 in contracts. And so after that is when I started paying attention and going, okay, this is clearly working. And so since then, it's probably added another million dollars. Um, and so the, the goal in you know how you do personal branding 
is you have to figure out what what's unique about you and not copy what everybody else is doing. Because the reason why we follow these different people is not because they do the same thing. It's because they all do something different. And so you got to really figure out what you're confident in communicating and sharing and what your knowledge is and your skill set or how you can tell stories and not focus on what other people do. And then again, give it enough time that you start to build up an awareness around whatever it is that you focus on. Well, that's a great way of putting it. So speaking of accomplishments, uh, you are trying uh, ABC for their number one TV show. That's the Bachelor. That's a big yeah. accomplishment in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, can, you, can you walk us through maybe the strategies or tactics that you employ to achieve such uh, remarkable fit? Yeah, so these stories are funny because they're always a lot simpler than people think. And, and that's probably why is because people overcomplicate things and we overthink things. And so when I outranked The Bachelor, um, it was around 2006 and my wife uh, was watching the season finale. And so I went in and was sitting with her and I had remembered in season finales before that when they ended, they would they would leave a cliffhanger. They'd tell you to come back in a couple of weeks to see who the new bachelor was going to be but this time they said come back after the commercial so we didn't have to wait weeks we only had to wait minutes and, and so i got wondering why they did that because it had to be on purpose there had to be a reason for it and so we waited and they announced who the gentleman was and then i got online curious what was so different about him and i could find surprisingly little information about this new bachelor and so I would, I would find a, a little bit of information over on one website and another paragraph over here, or maybe one picture over here, but there was, n there was not a single website that had it all organized. So what I did is I built a fan site and I organized all that information into an easy to navigate website. Mm -hmm. And then I did what SEO I knew at the time. This was about a year before I started my agency. So I was just kind of new to it and focused on that for uh, a surprisingly little amount of time, um, probably just a week or two before I outranked ABC. But the reason why it worked is because I solved an audience's problem. So earlier we talked about how you, you need to focus on aligning with your buyers, right? And so it was that easy, is what the audience needed was a place that they could find information about this guy they mostly wanted one of two things. They either wanted pictures or bios. Yeah. And so now I created a website that had organized biographical information and a photo gallery. And I was the only one that offered that. And so Google will position the sites higher to solve people's problems. No, that's a great uh, way to put it. You solve problem and the traffic came afterwards. So that's quite clear. Now let's talk about your customers. Or maybe there are people out there, uh, they want to, you know, start this SEO journey in order to grow their business. What does the process look like if they want to uh, come to you so that you can help them? Well, we could probably answer that two different ways. Um, because if they come to me to help, then then my company is going to do it all. So there's very little that they need to do. Now, if you want to explore this on your own, then it's good to understand what goes into SEO. Uh, you can simplify all of the hundreds of things into three categories. And so the first category is going to be how good or bad is your website built? So you focus on making your website load quicker. You make sure that it's mobile friendly, that it has a clean navigation. It's easy to buy your product or sign up for your service. And the second category is content. You can only show up on search engines for what Google can read. So you have to clearly put into words why you are better than the competition. And then the third category is external credibility. This is why reviews are important. Do other people talk about you? Do they link to your website? So out of those three categories, most of your visibility is going to come from the latter two, your content, your credibility. But where I like to start is the first category, the structure, because you, your structure is going to lay the foundation for everything else that you do. You can have the best content in the world, but if you have a really ugly website that, slow, that loads slowly... Google isn't going to send anybody to it. So you have to lock in your website. And then after that, it's just putting out awareness and putting out content that communicates why you're better than the competition. Uh, 
No, I like that. Uh, so website built, uh, content and credibility, those are very essential. Mm -hmm. uh, we live in a world that keeps changing. And uh, you mentioned it that you started uh, maybe 17 years ago. So uh, in your, maybe can you give us some insights as to how SEO has evolved over the years and how maybe businesses can stay ahead of the curve in adapting to any change that may come? So this is a great question because of the one we just answered, because they're related. Uh, so Google updates algorithms all the time. It does small updates, sometimes daily, big updates every few weeks, or every few months. But out of all of those updates, they still are related to those three categories, structure, content, credibility. So there's been huge major algorithms over the decades, but all of them are related to one or multiples of those categories. So the reason why I, I connect those dots is because if you if you stop trying to play a game and you stop trying to manipulate loopholes and instead you just focus on the quality of those three things, quality of your website, quality of your content, quality of your reputation, then it doesn't matter what the next reputation is, uh, the next algorithm is. Because every time there's been a new algorithm update, all of my clients have either been neutral or positive. We, we've never had a client get affected by an algorithm update because we're not trying to play games. We're, we're approaching this from the long-term view of how do you increase the credibility and reputation of, of, of a website. Um, so, you know, that may change in the future, but any algorithm to date in the 17 years that I've been involved is always either structure, content, credibility, or a combination. So just focus on those and then you don't have to worry about it. Now, what are some misconceptions that entrepreneurs that they may have about SEO? And uh, maybe if you can also tell us how they, these misconceptions can be overcome. The first one that always comes to mind is realistic expectations. Um, you kind of touched on it earlier about building success or personal brand. It's the same thing with SEO. SEO takes time. You know, if we talk about those three categories, it, it takes time to fix your website. You know, it might take a couple of days or a couple of weeks to make it load quicker, to improve the design. And then it's going to definitely take you a couple of weeks to start content. Because if you do it right, you're going to do research before you do content. You're going to research what problems your customers have. You're going to research the buying persona and what pain points they're trying to solve. And so you could easily spend days or weeks just figuring out what to write before you then have to write it. So then you start writing it and you have to, the, the visibility comes from multiple pieces of content and logistically it just takes time to research and write a lot of content. And so a lot of people with everything want quick, quick success, but with SEO, you know, there's, there's a lot of truth to the average of it taking about a year. Now I'll, I'll add one more thing to why it takes a year. So in addition to all the things you have to do, there's a difference between what I call progress and monetization. So you could make progress on your website and you could see your website make improvements from page 10 on Google to page five. That's a huge jump. That's five pages you've increased, which is 50 positions that you've moved up on search engines. But so few people go past page one. So you will see progress as you increase up the pages on Google, but you won't see monetization until you hit page one because that's where all the traffic is. So how can we position people for that monetization? Because at the end of the day, uh, what most entrepreneurs, all entrepreneurs want is to you know make money, but after getting on that uh, first page. Yeah. I mean, there's things you can do before then. Um, there's a couple of things that are sometimes faster. I mean, you might get lucky and, and get a little bit of visibility sooner on social media, um, paid ads, you can start sooner, but, but a lot of times you have to spend money just to figure out what ads work. Um, so a lot of people, you can start with something else. And then as SEO kicks in, you can kind of blend the two or, or phase one out. Um, so there's different things you can do. It's just a difference on your return on your investment. Um, you know, with like paid ads, if you start putting money into that machine, as soon as you stop, then everything goes away. Yeah. 
<laughs> and there's always an increasing, generally there's a, a constant increase in costs because of competition. Um, and so like with paid ads, you know, you, you might put a dollar in and get $2 out. And then with SEO, it's different. You put a dollar in and you get nothing out, but then you do it long enough. Instead of $2 out, you get a thousand dollars out. So it just kind of depends on what your tolerance and your patience is for a return on an investment. Okay. So I've heard this saying that content is king, right? And um, thinking about it, that's one of the pillars that you mentioned. Uh, now, when it comes to content, are there specific types of content that people should focus on or it does not matter? Well, you could, I guess you could give an example of different types of content. So there's written content, there's video content, there's audio content, there's image graphic content. Um, Text-based content generally performs best because it's readable, it's easier to access, um, and it's also lighter. You know, an image in a video is a heavier file than text on a website. And so we talk about making sure your website loads quickly. So text doesn't really affect the page speed, so you can keep your website loading quickly. Um, but there also is value in having diversified content. You know, if Google sees your competitors with just text, but then they see you with value added text and then also images and graphics and videos, then you're more of an authority. So there is value in having different types of content, but the, the key out of all of those is quality. And especially now with like AI, because a lot of people are mass producing content right. and they're pushing the easy button. And they think that because content is king, that it's just any content and the more content is better. But this is actually creating a bigger gap between quantity and quality. And so I'm seeing the people that go slower and focus on more value added content, even though they may not, may not be doing a hundred pieces per month and they're only doing five. I'm seeing those five do way better than the hundred. So it's just focusing on quality. Oh, no, that's good. Uh, quality uh, over quantity. That's that's what I heard there. Uh, you've worked with both uh, Inc. 5000 and Shark Tank businesses. How does your approach to SEO differ when dealing with businesses of different sizes and industry? Do you have a special approach that you use for different uh, size of businesses? Yeah, there's a different approach, but it's uh, for the most part, it's pretty similar. The The biggest difference is, you know, th th they still have the same issues, whether you're big or small, it's structure, content, credibility. And so the, the biggest difference is how aggressive you need to be. And, and so for uh, a bigger competition, bigger verticals, bigger businesses, you, you kind of have to compare where your website is versus the competition. And so if your competition has way more content, then you need to close that gap a little bit. If they have way more reviews and a better reputation, you need to close that gap a little bit. So it's mostly the same things, the same type of fulfillment. It's just a difference in how aggressive you have to be. Oh, that's good. Organic traffic um, has been classified as one of the best way uh, to utilize SEO. Could you discuss the significance of organic traffic and its impact on maybe generating real tangible results for business, how they can use organic traffic to grow uh, business? Yeah, it's, it's going to kind of be related to when we were talking about um, what your patience is and, and also your cash flow. Um, so there's, all, all different forms of marketing have advantages and disadvantages. And so when we talk about organic and monetizing that versus other types of marketing channels, there isn't one that's always better than the other. And, and so it depends on what scenario you're in. And so we can talk about the advantages and disadvantages of each of those. The, the biggest disadvantage to SEO is that it takes time. And so if you need money tomorrow, then SEO is probably not what you want to start with. Um, but the biggest advantage to SEO is it has a compounding effect. And so the more time you put into it, the more the results start to scale. And you also are building up a reputation. And so while you don't own Google, you largely own that reputation. And what you do for one search engine is pretty transferable to all search engines. Now, if you do paid ads, the biggest disadvantage to paid ads is you don't own any of the traffic. 
and the cost is generally always increasing. And then you have to deal with ad accounts, approvals, shutdowns, things like that. Um, but the advantage is you can get in quick. You can also change quickly. With SEO, you, you need to put in a lot of research in the beginning because you don't want to change direction once you start. Because if you change direction, you've wasted a lot of time. But with paid ads, you can turn off an ad account and start a new one and completely change directions. And so it just depends on the situation you're in, um, what your risk tolerance is, what your cash flow tolerance is, what your patience level is. Now, you've been doing this for many years, 17 years to be precise. Mm -hmm. What advice do you have for entrepreneurs who may be just starting with SEO or who are looking to enhance their current uh, business strategies? Well, with with anything, you have to be patient, um, you know, depending on if, if you're starting SEO for your business or you're starting it for a career. You know, if you're starting it for your business, then give it a year. If you don't have the patience to give it a year, don't start because you're going to be throwing away that time. Now, if you're starting SEO for a career, same thing. You have to give it time, you know, because your clients need to wait a year to see results. That means you need to wait longer than a year to start to build a reputation because you need at least that time to deliver results. So building up a reputation takes time. Um, and whether it's SEO or anything in general in entrepreneurship, uh, think about, is this something that you can do long-term? Because you want to find something that you enjoy enough to do it long-term because hopefully you find success. And then after you find a certain level of success, the next dollar matters less and less. And so if you're no longer doing it for financial benefit, is it something you would still enjoy doing? So also look at the long term. I like that. Uh, you have a book on Amazon, Outrank. Can you tell us the takeaway from that book, maybe for people that may be interested in learning more about your work? Yeah, I wrote I wrote the book for um, two audiences. Uh, there's I had to try and balance um, people that knew nothing about SEO. And then on the other side of that are people that are advanced and know a decent amount about SEO and especially the technical things. And so how do you talk to two audiences that have a different level of understanding? So what I did is I started the book based on stories and accomplishments. So we talk about The Bachelor, we talk about other websites that I outranked. Because when I start with that, it's fun, right? There's exciting stories about beating, you know, it's David versus Goliath. Um, but in the stories, it communicates the power of SEO and, and what you're able to accomplish. And then after the storytelling, it slowly eases into what goes into it. And so whether you're experienced or a beginner, it's a great read because it slowly transitions. And so you should be able to read it start to finish. And it's my agency's entire processes on how to do a full SEO campaign. Okay. You give us advice on, um, you know, maybe how to, for uh, entrepreneurs, how to grow their business. I also want to hear from you uh, this time around. I want you to motivate uh, my listeners uh, to tell them that they can accomplish their goals. Because for me, I always like to encourage people that hey, don't sit on the sideline, mm -hmm. get in the arena and go after your dreams. So can you please help me in your own world to tell my listeners that they can do it? Yeah, the you know the answer is surprisingly simple. Um, most people that found success are not because they got lucky. It's because they did one thing long enough that it started to compound and gain. And so I don't think I don't think success is complicated. I think patience is. It's really not hard to find success, but it is hard to wait long enough. And so you have to pick a thing and stick to it long enough. Now the other thing that comes to mind is especially with social media, right? We we we've been misinformed and we have a an a false belief that success should come quickly and, and everything on social media is, is the highlight reel and so we see a lot of wins but usually what we see is there's a really great quote and i can't remember who says it but um, it's something along the lines of overnight success takes a decade 
-hmm. And it's true. And so usually what we see on social media is we see the overnight success, but really that's year 11 and you didn't see years one through 10. And so don't be distracted by what other people are doing. You know, you can, you can be inspired by them. You can congratulate them, but don't hold yourself accountable at the same point in the race because they have generally years already behind them. And so one of the best things you can do is just kind of put on the blinders and then just stay focused. And as cliche as it sounds, the only competitor you should focus on is you. It's like, did I improve this day? Did I improve this week? Did I improve this year? And just focus on whatever it is that you're doing and tune out everything else. Oh, that's so good, Damon. Thank you very much for sharing that. Finally, where can my listeners find you? Yeah, well, I appreciate you having me. It's been a fun chat. Um, you can simply go to damonburton.com and on there you'll find uh, a link to my free SEO book and you'll find whatever social media channels that you like to follow. Oh, awesome. You have a free SEO book, so I'm going to check it out as well. Thank you very yeah. much for coming on the show. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me.